to thank you all for coming today. Um, as you know, there is a question on the ballot. It's question three. It's called the medical use of marijuana question. And like a lot of people, I didn't pay a lot of attention to this during the early process. We're all busy in our lives. We have children. We have parents. We have brothers and sisters. We have school for, that we have to take care of. And we're in the middle of, of a hot Senate race here in Massachusetts and a presidential race. But way down on the ballot is a question. And in it is the issue of the use of marijuana for medical purposes. And I don't think anybody will deny that there are a lot of people in pain and that we have compassion for those people and that we are obligated as a society, as legislators, as people who care about other people to do whatever we can to provide treatment and to help alleviate pain, but to do so in a responsible manner. As I go out and about and I talk to people about this question, they sometimes say, well, medical marijuana, it sounds pretty good. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as medical marijuana, as most people call it. There's marijuana. And there's uses for marijuana, but there's no such thing as medical marijuana. And people say, well, how dangerous could it be? They're going to go to a doctor, they're going to get a prescription, and they're going to go to a pharmacy and get that medical marijuana. That's not true, as I will talk about. And as I go through those types of issues with people, the response that I get is, I can't believe that. But that goes way too far. And ultimately, it comes down to the same response after going through this, this is, why would anybody support something like that? Well, let me go through a few things. So doctor said, marijuana under this proposal would be made available for people who are suffering debilitating diseases, and several of them are listed. Cancer, glaucoma, positive status for HIV, AIDS, hepatitis C, ALS, Parkinson's, and MS. There's a real legitimate debate about whether medical marijuana, marijuana for medical purposes, is, is proper, or does actually help anybody in certain of those circumstances. So it's broad to begin with, but then there's this one clause that's in the proposed legislation. Other conditions is determined in writing by a qualifying patient's physician. Broad, wide open. And in fact, when you look at experience, and I don't know how many people are aware of what's going on out in Colorado, but when you look at the nearly 100 plus thousand people who have marijuana cards out in California, 94% of them have it for a non-descript diagnosis of pain. Only 1% of those registered are registered for the purpose of HIV or AIDS. Only 3% of those registered are registered for the purpose of uh, cancer. So 94% fall into a very nebulous, broad, vague category of pain. That could happen here in Massachusetts because of the language that says other conditions are determined by qualifying patients. With prescription. No. State Senator John Keenan made a lot of crazy statements. The the biggest one I would have to say is this one right from the beginning. There's no such thing as medical marijuana. I mean, is if that's just not a slap in the face to every person who's ever had any benefit from medical marijuana. I mean, it's so obvious that it's obvious to 70-80% of the public because they, they that's what the, the polling shows for this issue. So I mean, how, how can a public official against 70-80% of the public make that kind of statement? It just doesn't make sense. It's like saying the sky, the sky isn't blue. You know, it's just, it's crazy. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as medical marijuana, as most people call it. One thing that really uh, kind of disappointed me with State Senator Keenan um, was his comments in the very beginning, again, this is, the, you know, this, I could pick up on his whole test, you know, the whole speech that he gave, so many uh, ridiculous inconsistencies, but I'm just going to pick on like the first three, because then you just know he's, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And um, the, the one thing that really was just so blatantly obvious is he says, I didn't pay much attention in the early process. And he's talking about the marijuana, medical marijuana initiative. He's saying that, uh, he, you know, it's, it's two weeks to the election now, and he just spoke out a couple days ago. So, this is the first time he's actually getting involved in this medical marijuana initiative that is on the ballot. That uh, signatures were collected all summer for. Um, it was a two-step process. 
There was actually more steps than that. There was a bunch of hearings at the State House. Uh, there was an opportunity by both the State Senate and the State House of Representatives to come together and come up with uh, a medical marijuana law that would bypass the initiative. They could, they could have done something much more restrictive. They could have uh, changed the initiative. They could have done so many things to stop or change this or take action on this to help patients, but they didn't. Um, I just not find it's very strange that we've been up there year after year after year. This guy is a co-chairman of the Mental Health Substance Abuse Joint Committee. So he's, so he's setting policy on marijuana, on Oxycontin in the state of Massachusetts. Um, Oxycontin use is through the roof. It was just on the front cover of the Boston Phoenix. Um, Mr. Keenan, you're doing a terrible job. Your laws, your restrictive laws only increase the price. They increase their drugs in the school. Um, you're talking about half pounds and quarter pounds of medical cannabis. Well, we, we're finding pounds of weed in the high schools. You, you, the kids are selling the weed in the high schools because the price is so high. They're selling the Oxycontins. You're doing a bad job. Uh, medical cannabis is a much better, safer alternative for people on pain. It, it would actually keep a lot of people from that Oxycontin issue. You know, I look at myself. If I had continued to take the pills that I was being prescribed for this back pain, where would I be right now? Maybe I would be having an Oxycontin problem. I mean, cannabis is so much lighter. I can I, when I don't need it, I don't need it. You know, I don't I don't have any craving, there's no addiction. There's no negative side effects like these pills. And we've seen what the pills do. Look at what ha is happening in Quincy. Look at the heroin problem that's creeping back now. It's about Oxycontin. And you know what? For you to get up there and say all these crazy things and not have any medical patients there, not have any medical patients backing you, Senator Keenan, you haven't talked to me. You haven't talked to any of the patients that I know. Like, seriously, you, you, you pretended that you cared about the patients in the beginning of your speech, but you clearly don't. Because if you did, you would have spoken to us earlier. You would have you would have read the initiative prior to two weeks before and then come out against it. You would have taken action months ago to to look at the initiative and maybe if you had some issues with it, changed it within your government role that you've been elected to do, the job that you're supposed to do. But actually you said that it was you, you were caught up in campaigning, I guess, for US Senate. I guess you were campaigning for a Democrat, for US Senate and President. <laughs> I guess that's more important. The, 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 you, you're a little, you're a little, you know, whatever you're doing for President Obama is more important than us patients. Is that is that what it is? And it's not even about Obama, is it? It's really about your 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 career and your 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 whole thing that you're doing, right? Is that is that that's what it seems like to me? You know, well, I'm, you're in Quincy. We know a lot of people in Quincy. I I, I think that uh, last time you had. You just became state senator. Um, you had some opposition. This time you have no opposition. You, you, you can do whatever you want. So, great. You had your moment in the sun. You acted like a jerk to us patients. Great. You got some time to make up for it now. And, and this, is, uh, this, is, this is us letting you know we're here. Um, I want to ask some people. If you live in Quincy, you live in Braintree, you live in this, this Senate district, why not consider the state Senate district? Not, why not consider running for office against this gentleman. Why not consider it? Um, I, I'm thinking of one per person specifically that I know who's a veteran. He's an activist, and he is a medical uh, marijuana. I'm not sure if he's a medical user or just a marijuana user, but uh, I know he supports the cause, and I think he would be a great person to run against the state center in Quincy next time around. And uh, I think that's what we need to start doing. We need to call these, call this reef of madness out, this anti-patient pa language, this anti-kids, I mean, we, the, the policies that this state center is backing is creating black markets of marijuana in our high schools. He, he's, he's the one who's behind this, and, I, and I'm calling it out because that's, that's the status quo that exists with state, and, and he's part of the state, he's continuing the same policies, this is the reason. Medical cannabis... We all know it doesn't go far enough. We need completely legalization. We need to take the marijuana out of the hands of the kids and put it into the adult hands, just like cigarettes. Cigarette use is down. Cannabis use is up. 
we, we're doing something wrong here. And uh, State Senator, you need to f like talk to some people like myself. Get some knowledge. Get some education if you really care. Prove to me that you care. Because at this point, it seems like you don't care and you're all about politics. And for some reason, I guess in your district, with the constituency that you're talking to, this is good red meat for you. But uh, it ain't going to play in the, in, the, in, the, in the greater realm beyond the group that you're talking to. Because we're here and uh, we're calling it out. Um, you know, you can't just sit there and say you didn't know about this because you knew about it. You know? If, if you don't know about it, maybe I should be doing your job because I knew about it months ago. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as medical marijuana, as most people call it. Wow. You know, I mean, to, to, to somebody like myself that uses it every single day and replaces that, you know, you, do you call Oxycontin and codeine and Tylenol medicine? Most doctors call them meds, so I guess they do call it medicine. Um, if I'm able to not take those harmful, uh, toxic, addictive drugs on a daily basis for the last 15 years and able to replace it with a substance that's non-toxic, non-addictive, non, uh, has no uh, cancer, if you use it with edibles and vaporize, there's definitely no cancer from it, unlike those other drugs which may cause cancer as well. Um, you know, and I say this because I've had experience in my own family, you know, people getting liver cancer and um, getting different things after taking years of pills. I, I think there is a cause and effect there, too. Um, you know, having said that, I just can't believe that that's like one of his first statements is that there's no such thing as medical marijuana. How can you get up as a state senator of Massachusetts with all the support that we have, with all the medical patients that have spoken year after year at the state house, known medical patients, people like myself. Um, look at my guns, you know, I'm not some hippie. I, I'm a strong person. I would never fake illness or pain to, to get some special privilege from the government. I'm like a libertarian, no way, you know. Um, I have real pain every single day. It's not the, the worst pain. Um, you know, and that comes to another couple statements he made. He, he, Senator Keenan kept focusing on the fact that so many people in California and Colorado uh, use medical cannabis for pain. And uh, he said it was non-descriptive, like the people didn't say what kind of pain they had. I think a lot of it is uh, back and nerve pain, like myself. Um, I have daily pain. Um, to describe it to someone that doesn't understand the pain that I have, picture this. Um, if you have a, like a 25-pound do dog laying on you while you're watching TV, it's not painful, right? Right, not painful. But imagine that 25-pound do pound dog laying on you all the time on the same spot, 24/7. That's kind of like the pain that I have. It's like it's not a it's not a brutal, intense pain, though it can be when it acts up and flares up when the nerve you know gets inflamed. It absolutely, can get like that. But for the most part, it's it's only bad in the morning and at night. And it's uh, cannabis really helps with sleeping, and that's that's one of the re main reasons I use it is when I'm done with my work day, when the adrenaline is all gone from my body, and I need to go to bed and relax. The cannabis helps me get to sleep and get up to work, so I can do another 10-hour day the next day. Today's Tuesday. That's what I used it for tonight. Um, so for him to to, to focus on pain, I, I just kind of that bothers me too. It shows a real ignorance, not knowing that most people actually do use cannabis for pain. It's like uh, complaining that uh, not enough cancer patients use uh, Tylenol, that most people use Tylenol for a headache. <laughs> I mean, it's because it works for a headache. That's why people use it for. I mean, you know, cancer and HIV, yes, I'm sure people use it for that too, but there isn't as many instances. There's many more people suffering from daily chronic back pain for 20 plus years. I mean, for me, I've been fo I've been I've had this back pain for 15 years. I've been dealing with it, and I've been using cannabis. So there's a lot of people like me. Long term, we were dealing with everyday pain. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as medical marijuana, as most people call it. Well, the good news is they only had two elected officials, Martin Walsh, as far as I could see, uh, state rep, Mass State Rep Martin Mental Institution Walsh. If you don't want know why I call him Mental Institution, check out the video I did of him uh, at the State House testifying against uh, marijuana decriminalization back in 2007. 
He said uh, medical. He said marijuana leads to uh, mental mental institutions. And then uh, there's uh, State Senator John. There's no such thing as medical marijuana, Keenan. That's it. That's all they got. It's uh, them versus the 70, 80 percent of voters who support medical marijuana. November 6th, you know what to do. Vote yes on question three. Thank you all for coming today. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as medical marijuana, as most people call it.